Hey, it's Alex here from AlexFigures.com. Now, if you've been watching my content for a while, you may have seen a few of my deep dive reviews on red light therapy panels. I have one beside me right now, for instance. Now, in the first few reviews I did, these uh, videos went for quite some time, 45 minutes or even longer. Part of the reason they took so long was me explaining my method, testing methods, and uh, showing what I was doing and providing all the uh, background in insights, etc to make sure that you know you were informed and knew exactly what I was doing and hence how I was getting that data. What I've decided though is I want to keep these videos a little bit shorter and instead I'm going to film this video now and show you my methods and explanations for why I do things and how I do things. So pretty much if you want to watch any of my deep dive reviews and you're curious as to how I'm coming up with the numbers that I'm presenting then this video is for you. Uh, all I'm going to do is I'm going to show you with my spectrometer and my EMF electrosmog meter here. Um, I'm going to show you what I'm doing, how I'm, uh, the measurements I'm taking, the distances, and also the rationale behind those um, measurements. Beside me, I do have the Mito Red Mito Pro 1500. I have this here because I've just finished reviewing it, and it was while I was reviewing this that I thought, hey, I should do this separate video. But we'll be using this to demonstrate how I do some of these readings. One of the first tests I do in my reviews is to test the wavelength output from these lights. Obviously we have the marketed, uh, the claimed outputs such as 660, maybe 630 nanometers, depending on the panel. And then I test the light using my spectrometer to see if what I'm testing matches up with the claims. So I can show you a quick example with this. I'm going to turn my spectrometer on. And by the way, um, this is a Hopo Color Technology, um, I'll give you the specs, but this tests right up. Uh, this test from 380 nanometers right up to 1050 nanometers. This cost me a few thousand dollars and it's perfect for testing power radiance, wavelength, flicker, um, and a few other bits and pieces. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on just on infrared mode. And I'm going to get a reading. We can see a breakdown of the light that has been emitted. Up here with the EE, we can see the irradiance, peak NM, that's your peak nano, nanometers that shows the highest peak. And I can move across here to see different, you can see the numbers move, to see different wavelengths and different irradiances. When I do this test, I actually hook this up to my laptop and I film the laptop screen because it's easier to see than looking at this little screen. What I should also note is I move this around and I get multiple readings, all right? And I try to find what I think is the best and most balanced um, reading. Because on a panel like this, we actually have four wavelengths in here. So you'll, you, you may have, um, you know, some, six, some red light over here, and then some near-infrared, and then a different wavelength of red light, and then some more near-infrared. So of course, if I measure right in front of one of these LEDs, it'll just measure that particular uh, wavelength. So that's why I try to pull back and I move around until I get something, you know, until I get a bit of an average of, of what I'm seeing on the screen. So that's how I test the wavelengths. I do this for the, the near infrared light and then I also do it for the red light. I do them separately just to make it a bit easier for the data on the screen. Next we test power or irradiance, which is measuring the amount of energy that is coming out at a particular wavelength. For this, again, I use the spectrometer, and what I do is I'm testing at 6 inches. Uh, some people want to test at 12 inches, some people 3 inches. Uh, 6 inches used to be like the standard distance to stand um, away from a red light therapy panel. Nowadays, due to the higher um, powered panels, some, people, some companies are saying you can go right up to 12 in inches. I've just stuck with 6. I feel like it's a good number. Personally, I stand, even though I know these are more, these new generation panels are quite powerful, I personally still stand quite close, so three to six inches. So what I'm doing here is I'm looking for peak power, all right? And what I'm, I'm looking for three readings. I take three readings in my um, reviews. I take peak power in red light, peak power in near infrared light, and then peak power combined, which is both. And what I mean by peak is exactly that. I'm looking for the highest number possible. So I actually move around the panel. Uh, make sure I'm six inches apart away, so I, I attach a six inch ruler and I run it along the face of the panel and I have this set to a multiple reading. So three times a second it's taking a reading and it's displaying the data on the screen. So this means the number is constantly changing. Now I'm just looking purely for peak, the highest reading possible. So all I do is I take note of the reading I see, let's say it's 
30 microwatts uh, over centimeter squared, and then all of a sudden I see 32. So I'll keep 32 in my head, and if it drops to 27, I just ignore that until I see something higher than 32, for instance. Whatever that final reading is, is what I report in the review, and that's what also goes into my Red Light Therapy Buyer's Guide blog article, uh, which is over at alexfergus.com. So again, I do that for Red Light Therapy, I do that for Neofred, and then I do a combined. Now there's some flaws in this testing, because obviously, peak power doesn't represent total power, right? You could technically have, or a manufacturer could technically, put some really high powered LEDs in the middle, and then weak ones all around to keep costs down and as I'm measuring around the middle I'll get you know the radiance from those strong LEDs and that doesn't indicate that the whole panel is like that uh, another thing is you could have um, LEDs angling in on each other um, so I get a concentrated hot spot for instance where as I'm moving around I get a massive peak but then if I go an inch to the side of that it drops off dramatically that's the problem with peak because all I'm doing is taking the highest reading that I see uh, and it's why it's not perfect, but people do like to know what the peak is, and this is why I have included it. But I also include some other tests which help to um, overcome the, the issues that the peak test has, and I'll get to them soon. Now, if I am seeing some big peaks and troughs as I'm moving around, I will relay that in a, in a review, because I think that is important to know. I also later on do a hotspot test, which will show, visually show, some of those massive peaks and troughs or concentrations. And again, that all goes into my review and I share that feedback with the viewer to make them, you know, so they can get, uh, make an informed decision and, and spend their money wisely. Um, so again, I'm doing that for the infrared, infrared and combined. And I just change the setting modes. Um, so obviously when I'm testing the infrared, I just have the infrared running and then flick it over to the red light. Next up, I do an average combined or radiance figure. How I do this is I actually measure nine points on a panel. And then I take the average reading. Now, it's not super precise, but what I'm trying to do is take six readings around the edge of the panel. So I'll take, I'll, I'll come in about an inch diagonally from the corner, and I'll come in about an inch diagonally from that corner. So there's two readings, one, two. I'll go down halfway, come in about an inch, um, take two readings either side, and then do the same at the bottom. So that's the six. And then I come into the uh, and then I take three readings through the middle, just trying to get smack bang in the middle, one, two, three. And that creates my nine readings. When I'm doing it, again, I'll just hover around and try to get an average. If for some reason I see something really high, you know, like 60, and then all the rest around 38, I'll ignore that 60 and I'll just try and get a stable reading. Um, sometimes you do see spikes in the reading as I move, uh, or if I come in on an angle, so I just try to settle in there get a solid reading it's not perfect you know there is a bit of variability here maybe a couple of couple of points but I'll get a rough sort of average I'll do that record all the readings um, and then like I said average average it out so for example when I measured this in my full review earlier I had readings ranging from low 60s to high 80s and the average came out to be 76 which is you know obviously right in the middle of all that range um, and typically you find around the edges, the readings are a little bit lower, so they were the, you know, 65, 69s, and then through the middle you get the higher readings, like the 80s, um, you know, high 70s. And obviously that's because there's less light coming on the, on the edge, and there's more in the middle. But that does sort of reflect the panel design. Again, it's not perfect, I mean, I could take 12 readings, I could take 100 readings, right, and you're just going to get more and more... Uh, accuracy but it still does give it does give a bit of a generalization and a pretty good overview as to how much power is coming from a panel there are design variances that can cause some issues with comparing data so for instance a panel like this has quite wide um, bulbs LED bulbs whereas a panel like the red light rising has quite narrow bulbs um, and they also they also protrude from the panel they're rounded but because the red light rising bulbs are a lot smaller, the chip inside them is exactly the same, right? So the chip is what's emitting the power. Just the bulb it uh, impacts how that how that light is coming out. Um, but because the red light rising have smaller ones, um, they actually have a larger concentration of LEDs in the panel. So you know, whereas this particular panel has 300 LEDs, 
The Red Light Rising 1500, Advantage 1500, isn't much bigger physically, but it has something like 500 LEDs in it. But anyway, that's how I test my average combined power over nine points. And again, that's also at six inches, and that's for both red light and near infrared when I'm taking those readings. I don't break it down into red light and near infrared, I just do an overall. Now the reason I take the average of those nine points is so I can calculate my the total output power from a panel. Now what I do for this calculation is I measure the size, the, the surface area size of the LED. So I take, I measure from the edge of this LED through to the edge on this side and then take, that's the width, and then I take the length or the height from top to bottom. I don't go from the edge of the panel, I go from the edge of the LEDs. I multiply those two together, so I, you know, 10 centimeters by 20 centimeters for instance, multiply them together to get a centimeter squared um, figure. Then I multiply that figure with the average power output. That then gives me a figure, a total figure in milliwatts. I then convert this to watts and I have one total wattage figure. So for instance, this panel had a wattage figure of 136.1 watts. What that means is on average, based on my calculation, this panel with these, all these LEDs in this area is emitting 130 what did I say? 136 watts of red and near infrared therapeutic light. Of course, we can then use this figure to compare it against other panels, uh, which is interesting, yes, but more importantly, you can use this figure to do some really neat value, um, value breakdowns. So for instance, I can calculate the cost per watt, effectively how much bang for your buck you're getting. Uh, so for this panel, for instance, it worked out to be $8. All I do is I take the, the wattage figure I've calculated and I take the price you're paying. And the price I take is always the discounted price. So most of these panels you can get for a discount using discount code Alex, A-L-E-X. So I always take that discounted price because hey, like you can get the discount so we may as well assume that's the price you're going to pay, right? From there you get a dollar per watt. So for instance, this panel worked out to be $8.02 per watt. So effectively you're spending $8.02 to get one watt of red in there for red light. This figure is then useful to compare it against other panels, especially other panels of similar size. So you can see, all right, well, which one is the best value? But it's also interesting to compare it against panels that are different sizes because maybe you're looking at a panel that's half the size of this, right? And it might have a figure of say $20 per watt. And then you realize, well, you spend a few hundred dollars extra, not only are you getting a bigger panel, but the dollar per, per wattage figure comes right down like to eight in this example. In which case you're gonna be more inclined to um, you know, spend that money and get better value. Also in the power and performance round, I use this power meter. Now all this does is connects into the power point, oh, you connect this like so, and then this into the power point. And what this will do is show the wattage draw, the amount of energy that the panel is using. Now I will test this in three modes, with both red and near infrared running, with just the red light and just the near infrared light. And then I'll put all those figures in the review and of course in my uh, buyer's guide over at alexfigures.com. I don't do anything with those numbers, it's just more for the data geeks out there who you know don't have access to all these panels and they want to crunch some numbers. You could look into it and, and see how much energy is coming out from the irradiance point of view and break it down based on the, the what is draw and it would show you know how efficient these lights are. Um, but it's still not 100% accurate because you've got power going to the control panel, you've got power going to the fans, you've got power maybe going to you know the circuits and other bits and pieces in it. But still I include it just because it's a simple test to do and some people are interested in this. Next I do a hotspot test. Now I, I actually do show this in the video because it's, it's a visual test. The only way to gauge it is by visually seeing it. Uh, and this is where I simply turn the panel around, have it six inches from, the, uh, from a blank wall such as the wall behind me. We turn it on and you see the concentration of red light. All going well, you'll see a smooth blend of red light. Some panels you'll see hot spots or what they call the polka dot effect. And this is where you get concentrations of light. And this could be due to the beam angle, it can be due to how the LEDs are spread out. It can also be due to what wavelengths are used in a panel. So for instance, if this panel just had 660 nanometers and that was it, you'd expect a nice red glow, right? If it was poorly designed or used some inferior technology or just, I don't know, maybe the LEDs are spaced out, um, 
what you may see is hot spots where like all that energy is concentrated on one area and then it drops off and then another area and what that means is when you're standing by the panel you're getting concentration red light spots you know like on your shoulder but not on your chest and then maybe in your sternum but not on the other pick for instance so ideally you want a nice blend so I do these tests in the reviews and I just show you uh, show you the results on screen and I'll give my interpretation as I see it based on the panel. Of course, if you get in a panel that has like five or even more wavelengths in it, it's gonna be hard to get a nice blend because if you have five different wavelengths, each LED is emitting a different wavelength. So you, over here you may have, you know, orange light and then you may have a red light and then you may have near infrared light and then another near infrared light and then you're back to red. You, that's, that's, that's a three or four inch space between the two red light LEDs. And it's gonna be very hard for a designer or an engineer to get an even, out, uh, an even spread of red light all the way across so you see a nice blend. So that's the downside with getting a multi-wave panel, especially that has you know, quite a few uh, wavelengths in it. I have tested device uh, panels such as this where it only had four wavelengths and I did see quite a nice blend. Um, other panels, you know, once you get around that five wavelength, especially if there's not an even spread between power, you know, maybe only 10% of power is going to a certain wavelength and 40% is going to another, you will typically see those drop offs. Next up, we look at EMF. Now, for EMF testing, I use my Cornet electrosmog meter. I've used this meter for a few years now and I've actually had it compared to uh, a GeoVital EMF engineer and he had like $10,000 gizmos and gadgets and my readings were pretty much bang on with his. And this is only a couple hundred dollars. I'll put a link there where you can get one below. Now this meter tests three different types of EMF. It tests magnetic, electric, and microwave. The sensors for each type of uh, frequency are on different sides of the meter. So what I try and do is I typically test it six inches or maybe three inches and I always specify in the, in the review what distance I'm testing from. And then I'll position, use my ruler, and uh, just like I do with the spectrometer, move around and um, get my reading based on where the sensor is. So I'm always six inches from it. When I turn this meter on, you'll see on the side there, you've got an orange light blinking away. There it's green and it does go all the way up to red. This has been programmed in for um, building biology, home, healthy home standards. So if it's in the green, we're in a safe zone. If it's in the orange, it's risky, not ideal. If it's in red, it's potentially dangerous. So the, I will share readings both the readings I'm getting on screen, but also the color that I'm seeing, because most people don't really care too much about what exact number it is. Um, they just want to know, is it is it dangerous or not, right? So I'll do that for microwave, magnetic, and electric. Really, it's, a lot of these panels don't have like transmitters such as Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, so you get no readings on microwave. Uh, so sometimes I skip that if I know that's that's the case with the panel. The main one we're looking at is electric and magnetic. Actually, the main one is magnetic. Electric, unless it's got really bad wiring, isn't usually an issue. Uh, but the magnetic one can be a problem sometimes. However, with these newer generation panels, I rarely see readings uh, above the green. If I get close to it, yeah, you do see some spikes there, but not, not many people, well, we shouldn't be standing right up. We don't need to stand right up hard against it. Um, and again, I just move around a little bit and try to get a reading. I, t I have the panel off and then I turn it on to see if there's a spike and then see where it stabilizes. And I hold that for a few seconds and then I'll share the data. We also look at sound and I've got a decibel meter here and the same thing. I hold that six inches, simply turn the panel on and set it on max hold function and it will just record the highest number, um, the highest sound figure in decibels and then I share this. That's a simple reading to do and uh, some people care about it, some people don't. Personally, none of these are outrageous, or none that I've tested are outrageously loud that you need earmuffs or anything like that. The only thing that can be bothersome is the whine, like some of them have a really high pitched noise and it's like kind of ear piercing. But if that's the case, I'll, I'll share it in the reviews. Okay, so one other thing I'll be testing in my reviews is the flicker rate of these uh, red light therapy panels. To test that flicker rate, I use the same spectrometer here. Now, what I'm doing with flicker, well, flicker is an interesting subject. I do have an article over at alexfergus.com on flicker, so I'll put a link to that below. You can go check that out if you want the full uh, you know, background and, and what you need to know about flicker and red light therapy lights. But in a nutshell, I'm testing, I'm taking two metrics with this meter, all right? I'm testing the 
flicker frequency, which is a figure that comes out in hertz, and that means that shows how many times a second the light or the LED is changing in brightness. Okay, um, so typically we see a reading of zero, as in there's no flicker in the panel, which is great, or 100 hertz. Out of all the panels I've ever tested, uh, it's been one of you know one of those figures. Uh, the second figure that I'm testing is flicker percent. Now what this does, uh, obviously it's a percent, anything from zero through to hundred percent. What this does is shows the intensity and light drop off each time the light is flicking. So let's say the LED has a flicker per, uh, frequency of hundred hertz. That means hundred times a second it is, is pulsing. The, the, the brightness is changing. The flicker percent shows how intense that change is. So if it's 100%, it means it's totally going on and off, on and off, and it's doing that 100 times a second if the flicker percent, sorry, if the flicker frequency is 100 as well. If the flicker percent is 50%, then it's only dropping 50% in brightness. Um, if it is, I don't know, like only a few percent, then the drop off is very, very minuscule. So. Ideally, in a red light therapy panel, we will see zero. We'll see no flicker at all, which will be zero percent in terms of flicker percent and zero hertz because there's no change. The, the LED is consistent and putting out the same amount of light, which is great. If we see some flicker in the panel, we'll typically see a hundred hertz uh, flicker rate, so a hundred times a second, it's changing. And now the flicker percent is how intense that drop off is. So. Um, Pretty much all you need to know is if it comes out as zero, no flicker, then hey, great. If there is some flicker detected, the lower the numbers, the better. Because if there's only a slight drop off in the brightness, then the flicker effect on, on us, on our body, is going to be very, very minuscule. So I think that's it. Uh, pretty much then going forward, when I do reviews on these panels now, um, I'm going to skip straight into giving you the data. It will save maybe 10 minutes of explanation and a lot of footage um, and will mean you guys get the data faster. And if you have watched this, then hey, you're gonna know how it all works and why I've done it in certain ways. If you think I've done something really bad, please let me know because I'm, I'm, I'm all open to um, changing and open to ideas. If you'd really like to see certain metrics on a certain panel done in a certain way, like maybe you wanna see the radiance at 12 inches or 24 inches or something like that, leave a comment below and if I get some spare time or when I've got all my gear out, you know, I'll try to do that for you and quickly create a video. Um, otherwise, yeah, I'm trying to get a bit of a standard system or standard uh, framework for my reviews. And of course, when I do my 2021 comparison, I'll be using similar methods uh, in those videos. If you've enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up. If you want to see some of these reviews, be sure to check out my videos below and uh, be sure to subscribe because I do have a lot of videos coming down the pipeline on these reviews um, on red light therapy panels. Alright guys, I'll leave you to it. Bye.